Hello everybody, my name is Kim. Welcome to my channel. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you to everyone for taking the time to click on my video. And if you haven't clicked that subscribe button, be sure to click it before you leave. I will be posting many more videos on how I grow orchids in my subtropical climate. All right, so today's video is all about mounting. In this video, it's a part two of my mounting series, and we're going to talk about the materials I have used in my garden for mounting orchids. All right, if I have an example of an orchid already mounted on that material, I will throw up a photo throughout the video so you can see um, different orchids mounted on those particular types of materials. All right, let's get started. So I have my mounting, orchid mounting box here. Um, I've got some scissors, some filament here. This is um, just clear filament for um, jewelry making, but you can also use fishing line. I have some wire, but what I use most often is actually just some, they're called um, cable ties, and most of us, I don't know, guess depending on where you grew up, know them as zip ties. Um, yep, yeah, so I use zip ties. I used to use all different kinds of ways of tying up the orchids. My go-to nowadays is zip tie. It's quick, it's easy, they're durable, um, and there's not a lot of tying right if you've used a zip tie before you just shove the end through that little hole and tighten it down and that's it it's super simple okay so types of materials that i use what i use probably most often is cork all right so here's a nice big piece of cork you can get these at orchid supply stores um if they're available online or well, also if you have an orchid supply store near you um, you can get them in all different sizes. I get all of my cork from Green Bard Orchid Supply. Um, I feel like they've got really good prices. They're not, they don't seem to be overpriced there and I've found some really good pieces. When I get cork, what I'm looking for is shape. Okay, I'm looking for a shape that I find interesting, but I'm also looking for all of these little grooves. I really am drawn to pieces of cork that have these little nooks and crannies in them. So you can see this one has a lot of little nooks and crannies, a lot of options and opportunities. I like to look at the cork from all different angles and see which one I like the best when I'm trying to decide how I want to mount and what I want to mount on that piece of cork. I also have been mounting quite a few orchids on these pieces of cedar. Now, cedar is not a hardwood, it's a softwood, but red cedar in particular, the kind that you can find in your hardware stores usually for, um, that it can be used with building materials or used as building materials, is usually rot resistant. It can usually take quite a bit of water before it starts rotting. So that's why I get it. It's also readily available in my hardware store. It's easy for me to find. It's um, some woods or some hardwoods can be difficult to find. They're more of a specialty piece of wood and um, can be more expensive. I got this from my local hardware store as a big, um, I want to say it was 10 foot by 12 foot piece of wood. And the hardware store actually cut it for me. So I go, it's Home Depot does that. So I don't know if you have Home Depot in your local area but um, you buy a piece of wood and they will cut it for you. So I didn't even have to cut it. I just bought the piece of wood and had them cut it to my specifications. In the end, when you buy a piece of wood this size at an orchid supply store, you're going to spend anywhere from 10, probably to $20, maybe 25. The um, per piece price, once I cut it up, was about 375 so that's why I have been using a lot of cedar 
It is easily available in my area. It does have some rot resistance properties or water resistant properties. Um, also the baskets, orchid baskets are made out of cedar. So, you know, that's just my thought process that if, <laughs> if it works for the basket, it should work for a mount, right? I don't know, that's what I do. Um, if you look online, you will see that um, some cedars that have a lot of aroma and have chemicals in there um, can be harmful to some really sensitive orchids. I haven't had a problem, but um, just be aware that there is some information out there that will tell you that cedar with your um, orchids that have really small roots or more sensitive orchids um, could have a hard time on the cedar. Another thing um, with my, my plaques like this is screwing holes. And I think I've shown you on a previous video that um, the roots like to dig down in there and it helps them anchor. Okay, so that's um, cedar. I got it from my local hardware store and the Home Depot actually cut it up for me. So I didn't have to do that at home. And then just with a drill, drilling those holes in there, um, I drill a hole at the top and the bottom because I stack them. And I'll show you what I mean by that with a picture, but um, I'll actually hang another plaque with another orchid underneath this. All right. I also have mounted orchids on chola wood. This is natural chola wood. And um, I want to talk a minute about, you know, finding other options for your orchid mounts. I actually, like I said, I mentioned a moment ago, I go to the hardware store. You're not stuck with just orchid supply stores. Try other sources. Like for example, I get this from the Chola Wood from my local pet store. Okay, so this Chola Wood is, it comes from a type of cactus. And my thought process in getting pieces of wood from the pet store is that if it passes specifications to be able to go into an aquarium or to be able to use with animals, which are often very sensitive to chemicals and very sensitive to um, contaminants, then it should be okay for my plants. I don't have any scientific <laughs> evidence or proof of that, but that's my thought process. So you're welcome to watch me use them and, and see how my plants do before you try it. But um, I'm finding that the local pet pet store is a really good option to save money because this piece was only $15. If I were to purchase something this size from an orchid supply store, from my experience, it's quite a bit more expensive. Okay, so I've got chola wood from the pet supply store. Also from the pet supply store, I have these really cool pieces of wood. This is meant for an aquarium or a reptile domain, but um, just look at that. Look at that texture. It's absolutely beautiful. These are, uh, I think it's called Mopani wood. It's an African hardwood. I mean, look at the grain in that. That's absolutely beautiful. This was $25. It did not come with this. Um, it was meant for an aquarium. It has this flat side because that's what you would set down on the ground inside the aquarium or set on the bottom surface. Um, what I had, had my uncle help me. He's wonderful um, in helping me with all this stuff, but he just drilled a hole and then we took this eye screw, a screw that's had this eye here, and screwed it down into there and now I can hang it. Okay, so I did, he helped me do the same thing here. Okay, so just drilled a hole down into the wood. Now this is, when they say hardwood, this is a hard wood. It was very difficult <laughs> to drill that hole. It took quite a bit of, of elbow grease to get that in there and then just screwed that um, I hook with the with the lacings on there into that piece of wood. Now, the um, directions that come with this explain that before you put it in, aquari in an aquarium, that you should soak it 
to get the tannins out because the tannins will discolor the aquarium water. Based on my research, tannins are not bad for orchid roots. They actually stimulate root growth. So you could follow the directions if you know to err on the side of caution. You could follow the directions that come with these pieces of woods from the pet supply store and soak them first um, just to get or to leach out a lot of those tannins. Um, or I'm probably going to use it as is because like I said, based on my research, I don't think tannins are bad for the orchid roots. But like I said, I'm going to be mounting orchids on these pieces. You can follow my collection and see how those orchids do before you try it. We can use my collection as a little experiment. Or again, just erring on the side of caution, you could just follow those directions and leach out the tannins first before you use it. At my orchid supply store, Green Barn Orchid Supply, they also, instead of baskets, they sell just these little plaques. I do have orchids mounted on these cedar plaques. They, um, I like these little slats. It just gives lots of aeration. I tend to turn them on their side and mount them like this. I have seen people put the orchid right on top like this. I may try that at some point with like bulbophyllums and um, orchids like that. I've seen some compact catleas right like this and then hanging with the wire with these, these little metal pieces. All right, the last material that I use quite a bit for mounting is pottery. I use terracotta, like I will probably mount something on the side of this big terracotta pot. And I got this from the Orchid Den, from Joshua at the Orchid Den. Really beautiful piece of pottery. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to use it like a little a dish like this. It does have holes. Or if I'm going to turn it sideways and use it like a plaque. So I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this yet, but orchid roots love, they love this pottery surface. They grab on. Think about your terracotta pots and those cattleyas that grow out the side and really grab on to the outside of that terracotta pot. Yeah, so it's not... It, even though it's porous and it is wicking, um, it's not bad for the orchid roots. They really attach and love that. Um, I got this from Nat uh, Natalia, I just one more orchid. I filled it with um, this coconut fiber that I also just get from the hardware store. It's, it's actually coconut fiber liners and I just pull it apart and use what I need. So filled that with coconut fiber and I will be putting some kind of orchid that's going to stay small. I haven't decided what's going in there. I did try a, um, a little summer blooming phalaenopsis, but those just do not do well outside for me. So my mounted orchids are outside, they're not inside. So I had to take that out. It's back inside growing tons of roots and very happy. Um, just my summer blooming fowls just don't do well outside for me. It's just too hot in my environment. So I also have this that I will be putting something small and beautiful in before too long. All right. So that's it for what's in my box and all the different types of materials that I use. Ah, one more thing. I recently found some driftwood on Amazon. This was also meant for an aquarium. So I, like I said, I've really been um, looking into alternates, alternative options for orchid mounts that can be a little bit more cost effective. A piece like this would probably be 40 or $50 if you get it from an orchid supply store. That's just been my experience. If you can find it cheaper than that, that's wonderful, let me know where you find it. But when I go to orchid supply stores or just orchid nurseries, a piece of driftwood like this is very expensive. So I've really been looking into pet supplies. And like I said, I don't, I haven't tried it yet. So 
If you want to let me be the guinea pig, <laughs> let my orchids be the guinea pigs, I am perfectly okay with that. Stay tuned. Um, but I've got this really cool piece of driftwood from Amazon for about $20. They came in a pack of two. Um, this is what they consider extra large when you look on Amazon. Um, but really cool piece. It came, like I said, it came in a package of two and they were about $20 a piece. Um, so definitely not bad compared to what I've been seeing in terms of cost from orchid nurseries and orchid supply stores. Now, with driftwood, it's really important to pay attention to where it came from. Sorry, I just kicked the tripod. Be careful um, about where it came from. If it came from a saltwater um, source, keep in mind that you're going to have to check with the vendor that's sending it to you to see if it's already been soaked and leached out all of those salts or you're going to have to do that. You're gonna to have to um, soak it, boil it, get all of the, leach out all of those salts before you use it with your orchid. Okay, so when you're looking at driftwood, look for the source. Um, the directions on this one did not say that we needed to do that. And it's meant for an aquarium, a freshwater aquarium, so I feel comfortable that this piece is from a freshwater source and will not be a problem for my orchid. All right, so those are the materials. Those are all of the different types of materials that I mount orchids on so far. Maybe I'll find some more things. Um, I didn't have any hardwood plaques to show you. Oh, I do have a cypress piece in here. This is a piece of cypress. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, hardwoods, if you're looking, if you really want to get a hardwood, um, other than what I showed you from the pet supply store, some good examples are hickory, maple, um, teak is another hardwood. Hmm, let me think. I think mahogany is also. Um, but if you just look up hardwoods, you can find some some different types of woods that are considered or classified as hardwood. Anything that's a hardwood, just be sure that whatever you get is not treated with any kind of chemicals. You don't want anything that's pressure treated. So if you're going to your local hardware store, you have to really make sure you read labels and make sure that um, the wood has not been treated with any kind of chemical that would make it better for building, right? Because you're in a hardware store, so that is the purpose of that wood there. So you've got to be really diligent in reading labels and making sure that the wood you're purchasing, if you're going to purchase it from a hardware store and have it cut up to save some money, um, just make sure you're purchasing wood that has not been treated with anything. All right, so I'm going to clean up a little bit here. I will be back and let's mount something. All right, everybody, I'm back. I have this little Catlia that I'm going to be mounting. This is Catlia forbesii. Um, really been into Catlia species lately, so this is a really special little plant for me. Um, really looking forward to seeing this one grow and develop. I've got three options here. So the first one is a piece of cork. The second one is one of my cedar plaques. And the last one is one of those Mopani. I hope I'm saying it correctly. I'll put it, I'll put the name of it up on the on the screen with maybe a picture of the tag that it comes with. Um, but one of those hardwood pieces that I got from the pet supply store. Well, sorry about that. It was stabbing me. <laughs> Ow. Um, I've already got the hook in there, ready to go. All right, so let's just take a look at this plant. So what I'm looking for, you can see, I don't know if you saw my other video, I'll link it to this one, is this plant is definitely a climber. Okay, so that's one of the reasons this is definitely a candidate for mounting for me. The rhizome starts here and the, the pseudobulbs are climbing up the rhizome in a vertical direction. If I put this in a pot and got the rhizome flat on the media surface, the plant would look like this. Okay, so this is definitely a climber. Um, it could have just been the growth habit based on where it was growing, um, but for whatever reason, 
this plant is climbing up, so that's why I'm choosing to mount this one, okay? So when I pick up the piece of cork, I'm looking for, I mean, I could just plop it right there on the front, but what I try to do is I try to work with these little grooves. Like I'll slide that rhizome right down in that little groove, and to me, that just adds a lot more interest. I think that creates a more natural display um, by working with the grooves in the mount. Okay, so I kind of like that. That one's pretty cool. Option number two. Is just taking one of those cedar plaques lay the plant right there in between two of the holes and I could mount it just like this when you're mounting you always want to make sure you put the growing side towards the mount so those new roots come that come out have something to grab onto um, so that looks very pretty as well so that's definitely an option and last I have, this is pretty heavy too. Um, I have this piece of hardwood and I'm seeing this little indent here. I'm, my eyes kind of gravitating towards that, putting those, that rhizome right down in there. And it would look something like that. And then it would have lots of space to climb up. With something like this, I haven't talked about um, turning your mounts into artwork, but um, this one definitely with this beautiful two-tone piece of wood and um, a compact catlia. We've got another arm out here. This one definitely has potential for one that I wanna fancy it up a little bit. All right, um, all right, so looking at those three options, for me, this is a really special little plant. Um, and I think it, I'm going to go with this piece of wood. I think that will make a really beautiful mount. I just love the look of this piece of wood. And um, I think this is the one I'm going to go with. All three of them were great, um, but I am going to go with this one today. All right. So the materials I'm going to use. Now with, um, this is a bifoliate catlia. That means each pseudobulb has two leaves. Those tend to want a little more water than um, some of the other cattleyas. So I am going to use some of the coconut fiber just to keep it a little bit more moist around those roots. I'm just gonna pull a little bit off. Take a big chunk out. A little bit more. When you get the coconut fiber lining, they put something sticky on there to hold it together. So it is a little sticky, so don't let that throw you off. Um, I haven't had any trouble with it. It hasn't harmed the plants in any way, but it is a little sticky. All right, so I've got the, this is kind of heavy. It might be a little interesting to try to do this while I'm holding it. So I'm gonna situate the plant down in there going to hold that in place with my thumb. Now, obviously, if you were doing this, you'd be doing it on a table and you wouldn't have to maneuver like this. So this is probably gonna look a little bit more complicated than it actually is. Going to put the coconut fiber around there. Wrapping it around that root system. Now, you could use, I could use the twine. I am going to use my zip tie. It's, it's what works best for me. Um, I am going to kind of thread it through the coconut fiber. That's another benefit of having the coconut fiber. If you kind of thread it through that coconut fiber and I've got it wrapped around that root ball, it kind of camouflages it a little bit. It hides that zip tie. So see, I've got the, the zip tie here. Going to wrap it around the back. Can I turn it and not drop it? Let's see. Like I said, you'll be doing this on a table. It will not be this difficult when you do it. I'm going to wrap it. Okay, turn it around. You just slide it through the eye of the zip tie there. 
and tighten it down. When you are tightening it down, I was paying special attention not to make sure I wasn't covering up any of the, also be really careful. Notice I had a new growth there. I was being really careful not to um, bump that when I placed it on the mount. Um, and then just tighten that down. Just be, if you have any new growth on there, be really careful not to bunch, bump it when you're mounting. Okay, so we've got that. There we go. And I think that is pretty and ready for the shade house. All right, there we go. Now, um, the zip tie just wrapped around, tighten that down. Oh, what I was getting ready to say is I was just going around the roots, so I didn't have to worry about that. But if this was a bigger plant and I was going through the pseudobulbs, be really careful not to hinder or block any of the growing points. So if you have any available eyes on the pseudobulbs, just be really careful not to block them. I didn't have to worry about that because I was really just going at the base of the rhizome and, and grabbing onto those existing roots. So I didn't have to worry about blocking any available eyes. Um, and because this is a, such a small plant, I didn't worry about going through these pseudobulbs. With a larger plant, you will need to go through the pseudobulbs and tack down that rhizome a little better. This had a pretty good existing root system and there was a piece of the rhizome sticking out at the bottom that I could grab onto. Okay, so this plant isn't going anywhere. Um, but if it was a bigger plant and it had um, more pseudobulbs, bigger pseudobulbs, and it didn't have that available root system to tack down, you would have to go in between. And in that situation, just make sure you're not blocking any available eyes. All right, so this one is ready to go. Looking forward to seeing how that develops and, and get giving you lots of updates once it's in the shade house. All right, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope this, you found this video helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up and be sure to hit subscribe. See you soon.